Gentlemen, welcome to Bigfoot Odyssey's Late Show. We haven't done an actual late, late show in uh, in a while. It's probably been a week, hasn't it, Brad? A little bit over <laughs> a week. It's been a while. So what, we're back on a regular Sunday night with the Late Show. Uh, I got two great guests here with us. I'm Kerry Arnold. Here with me, as always, my awesome co-host, Mr. Brad Hatcher. You had uh, you had some interesting stuff go on this weekend, didn't you, Brad? I did. I had a, a buddy of mine. Well, the guy that – his name is Jonathan Tyler. He's a, a southern rocker. And he was in town playing a, an outdoor venue on Saturday night. And so I met up with him for lunch to just visit. And so it was fun to catch up with him. But I've forgotten to plug his album he just released called Old Friends. So he's, he's a good old Southern rocker. And uh, I think you guys would like him. So. Old Friends. Send me the, give me the link to that. And we'll be sure and put that in the description. I know I played. We have our song that was written by uh, Tom Feller our Bigfoot Odyssey song. And uh, I was, I wanted to see if JT would kind of do something with it, make turn it into a little bit more of a rock thing, you oh. know, the same, same chord progression and everything. Just, uh, you know, I, I digress. Well, he, <laughs> but, uh, he, he did the, he did the music for the show, the HBO show called Boardwalk Empire. That's right. If you guys remember that. Uh, Scorsese did that. So that was pretty cool to, it was some really good guitar riffs, and I think he's actually probably going to be watching tonight. So, there you go, JT. What's up, man? <laughs> well, our guests for this evening, uh, these two gentlemen, uh, we we've had them both on the show before, each individually, but uh, they got together and have got some really interesting things to talk about. Donnie Miller, he's creator of Standing Goats Rescue on YouTube. Uh, if you haven't gone and subscribed to Standing Ghost Rescue, it's uh, it's a, essentially a Bigfoot channel now, and it's a lot of really good stuff on there. And my good friend and my bodyguard, actually, Mr. Jeff Townsend, when you guys hear me talk about being out in the woods with my bodyguard, Jeff, this is him. And, uh, I, you know, I don't think it was originally meant to be that way, but whenever we got out there, I think Jeff could kind of tell that I wasn't really comfortable. So anywhere I went, Jeff was he was right there with the pistol 10 millimeter on his hip oh. ready, ready to go. So, uh, and, uh, and I appreciated that very much. It, I, I felt a lot better having Jeff there with me because when I, whenever I say this and I mean this, that if a bullet was coming at me, Jeff would have stepped in front of it. And that's just yeah. how I feel about it. When you told me about what you had seen in your sighting, you know, Danielle and I both talked about this, Jeff, we knew that you had seen it. There was no gotcha. question in our in our minds and hearts that you had actually seen this but you guys put yourselves in a position to do that why don't you why don't you donnie why don't you tell us how you guys got together first uh, as far as our original meeting yeah yeah we actually um i met jeff through the channel i contacted he you. okay yeah uh he had felt the lord had brought him to me and um Honestly, the very first conversation I had with him within 10 minutes, uh, I, I believe that to be true. Uh, we have a connection that's rare. I ha have a few people on the channel that I'm very bonded to. And Jeff is like my brother. Um, our, uh, many of you know that I adopted our granddaughter. Me and my wife did. And so we're now mommy and daddy, which took away her grandparents. And she has adopted Jeff as Grandpa Jeff. That's and awesome. he's just, he's part of the family. And it's, um, I trust him with my life. And where you said he was your bodyguard, I can second that. And Jeff, yeah, if you haven't seen him, he's a mountain. He's a big man. He's a pretty good size fellow. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. And I'm five nine, so I kind of look up to him literally. <laughs> Uh, but we just, we finally, um, we talked for several months and then we finally had the opportunity. He came down, which we can't get away for overnight because of the animals, but, uh, he come down and it was one of the greatest times of my life. And we absolutely loved him. And he's just, um, he's the most down to earth person. I believe that I have ever met. And well, I, I know my life I'm, for him. I That's know. Awesome. I know that you had some things going on with some security lights, some floodlights around the house where the lenses were just being taken off essentially. And the lights, yes. the lights being messed with. And was it, was it you Jeff that actually found one of those lenses stuck into a tree? Yep. Tell us about that. 
Uh, did you want me to tell you? Yeah, yeah Jeff, it, it doesn't matter. Go ahead, man. I, I, go ahead. It, it, it's all true. Every I saw it in my own eyes. It's completely true. No, we have where we live at the front of our house uh, faces west, and it's right on a four lane highway. And we're wooded on the north and the, the south end. And we've got a small parcel of woods. I recently cleared it uh, directly behind us. And then there's a big lake. Uh, we have put security lights on all four corners of the house. And each security light has two bulbs. And they're the big 500 watt screw in bulbs. They're not the um, LEDs. They're the regular real thick lens on the front of them and uh, the light fixtures we have a total of eight lights each uh, security light assembly has two bulbs on it and with them being on the corner one bulb i'll aim towards the woods on the south and the opposite bulb will aim to the back and i'll do the same on each corner that way the entire perimeter of the home is lit up the the lenses that face the woods I come out and uh, we had turned the lights on and there wasn't any light. It was really dark. We, we've always had weird activity and I didn't know that we had these things around here. I didn't know they were that close to my home, but we had turned the lights on one evening and there was no light at the North end. And that's where the majority of stuff happens. And so I went out and looked and the lens was missing. Um, it's just this really thick glass lens, but it was as though it just fell off. Uh, yeah, and uh, but I didn't find it. They were just gone, and it was on both ends of the house. I've replaced them, I think, eight times. Wow. And I, I don't even fool with it no more. If I go out and spend nine dollars for two lights and put them in, sometimes it's a matter of days, sometimes a few weeks, and the lenses will vanish and i found one in the side yard on the north side and it was broke it was missing about a quarter of it and that's the only one i ever found and i just assumed that maybe the goats trampled it in we have no grass because we have living lawnmowers and i thought maybe they trampled it into the sand and we just never found it but i've box blade that side i've pulled the landscape rake with a tractor through there we never found it <clears throat> excuse me and Jeff, when he come down, he was asking about the activity because we had the booming sounds. We live in a brick home and come to find out something was hitting the brick and it sounded like a thunder. Uh, you could tell it was coming from the wall. You just couldn't pinpoint where. And it was on the north end and it just sort of uh, reverberated through the entire that whole north half of the house. Well, when Jeff was here, uh, we had walked in the woods on the north side of us. Um, it's wooded. There's no houses on it. There's no, um, it, it's just wooded with a sinkhole. And I was showing him the trail. There's a big tree right by the fence. And there's a, like a mound of dirt on the, the back side of it, which could be from the root ball. Um, but there's no leaves on it. It's always cleared you have a thick leaf litter all around it and that hump is cleared and we found big foot track footprints on it several times and the bark on the tree on the back side is like somebody's been picking it it's a live oak and it's just a big section with the bark picked off of it but we had walked down there and i was showing him the game trail and i told him i said you know I'd, i i want to try to go around that that west side of that sinkhole but it's it's thick and I, it, it would be hard to get around and with our snakes down here um which you, you have about the same over where you're at carrie and so i was showing jeff where the trail went around the east side of the sinkhole and he had pointed over on the west side and he said what is that and there's a tree an oak tree and it's probably um eight inches i guess seven or eight inches in diameter and it's broke off about four and a half or five foot above the ground. And I thought he was referring to uh, the tree being broke. And I told him, I said, I, th I think a storm broke it or something. And he said, no, what is that? And I 
I thought he was referring to the broken tree and I pointed, I said, the tree behind it, there's a couple of trees. And I said, that dead one is lean and that's the top to that tree. And then he finally clarified, he said, no, what is that on top of that stump? And I didn't see it uh, where I was at. I, I guess I was looking at the thin angle of it. And I couldn't see the, the actual lens. And we walked over there and that lens was beaten down. Um, it, it was in the stump and it's oak. It's not rotted. There's no termites. And uh, I tried to pull it out and it's, it's hubbed up pretty good in that wood. There's no marks on it. There's no uh, chips. If somebody would have like took a hammer and tried to drive it in. And I, I don't know that you, you could with it being glass. Uh, right. Maybe if you use like a rubber hammer, probably, but I don't think you'd be able to get it into the fiber of that Oak. It's, uh, it's seasoned is rock hard. It's still there right now. Uh, well, as far as I know, I haven't been down there in a while, but uh, I didn't yeah, pull it out. Long, I left I went, it. I went around the fence just to, and looked through my binoculars just to see if it was still there and it was. So, oh, I mean, okay. obviously it took some force to get it in there. I mean, I, I saw the pictures of it, the images you've got it on your channel where that thing is, it is down in. Yeah. That, it's I, embedded in there I, really I, good. I, I yeah. couldn't budge it whatsoever. What do you think what, that's about? It, I mean, it, it was pushed in with such force. It's just like it, almost like a hydraulic uh, fist. Do you, have, and, do you have an opinion of what that could be about, why they would do that? I have no idea. Um, Jeff and I <laughs> talked about that for probably an hour. And there's so many variables of what it could be. Um, but none of them really uh, make any sense. You know, if it's a marker, why would they put it right there? You could see my fence. Yeah. The trail there was very obvious. The game trail. It's just there's no reason for it. And um, I've been wanting to walk back there and see if I could find the rest of them. And I actually attempted that a few months back. And I got 30 feet, I guess, past that stump on the west side. And a rattlesnake I rattled right beside my foot. And I didn't have my boots on. And it just it scared me pretty bad. bad. And then a rabbit, uh, 10 foot from me, a rabbit comes flying by. And that just set me over the edge it scared me so I, just, I backed out I never went back there but um, we did find uh, there was a couple of bones that were laying at it, uh, about 15 feet from where that lens is now there was a couple of bones I don't know if it's a, a dog bone maybe I don't know it was um, a part of a, a jaw bone I don't think people understand it, it. To, to break this light off of that off of that bulb, those those diffusers, uh, that's a little piece of the thing, a little, you know, little, like little uh, indentions on it, or little, actually little external uh, bumps. It's, it's what diffuses the light to go across the yard. Mm -hmm. Those are permanently bonded onto those lights. Uh, right. They're never made to ever come back off. And something, if it was somebody messing with his lights, you would think they'd just unscrew the bulb, right? Right. Something is putting its hand on that bulb. They had to to hold it because it, it takes such force to break. They're breaking that. They're literally breaking that diffuser off into that light. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't realize what force is required to do that. I, brought, I come home and I had some lights just like that. Oh, ones didn't work anymore. I put one in the bias to even use a chain break and a pull handle trying to break that diffuser off. And I could not do it. So wow. you can imagine what kind of force it actually takes to do that. And there, and whatever's doing it's smart enough to hold the bulb, break it off with the other hand, because if they didn't, they pull the whole lot there and drop out. Right. Yeah, and, it's, and they're, and they're, they're high. nine and a half feet off the ground. There's no ladder marks. There's nobody standing on something to do it. How high off the ground? The weirdest thing you ever saw, man. The one at the back side of the house is um, around nine and a half feet, nine, nine and a half feet. And the one up front is just a few inches uh, shorter than that, probably eight and a half, a little over eight and a half feet. Uh, I can't touch them from the ground. I have to use a six foot step ladder to change them. Well, but to me, it's, it's just, almost obvious what's going on. I mean, they don't like those lights being shined out there, apparently. Uh, two plus two is four. 
what else you you know what's around there you've had these experiences these things going on donnie you've seen them yourself you know these creatures yes. are around there you're in florida which to me is probably to i would say one of the most highly populated states when it comes to these creatures uh, yes. so they're there yes. they are obviously doing this okay these are all these yes. things that when you add all these things together they've done this i just thought it was very interesting uh what it was going on there and this was something that that you both had had uh, experience with you know you losing the light jeff finding it in this you know embedded in this tree where you just cannot pull it out and obviously like the, sword the, stone, the, class. the sword and the stone yeah. you, I, donnie hill the stump i tried with all my might just to loosen it and couldn't do it it's yeah it's, it, it's What's crazy odd is put it in that it didn't break if it took that right. kind of force to get it in it uh, just, yeah, that's it, it took his hand and just stuck it up there and just Forced in those wood fibers, and it's like but there's it, no, it's, um, it looks like it was no split. Hard, that's how hard yeah. it's in those fibers. And I, I thought maybe that that stump was split, and some kids may have went in there and put it in, but there's no split on that stump, it's solid. And it's I even, solid. uh, the, the way it's standing up, I tried to rock it like this to kind of you know, uh, saw it out, and yeah. it wouldn't move. The whole that whole stump was was moving but it didn't and well, I, I could probably i'm sorry go ahead oh i was just saying i i could probably get it out um with a board or one of them rubber hammers I, I don't have a rubber hammer but i got a lot of boards but i just i left it there to, i have no use for it it's just garbage if i pull it out but it's, it's yeah, neat it. it's, uh, but i do want to find the other ones which i, I haven't uh, i haven't went on that uh, north side yet that would be it's something just, if you just found them randomly put in broken trees that that would just be yeah. you know, whatever it meant you know you can only speculate but to, to find them like you said i think that would just be awesome yeah <laughs> uh, find them. some confirm some more confirmation like like you need anymore i mean we're, we're going to get into this experience and you guys had a pretty harrowing experience uh here just recently uh, but before we get into that, want to remind everyone that Bigfoot Odyssey has Spook Week coming up. Uh, this will be our, our second uh, annual Spook Week. We do a show every night uh, from the 25th to the 31st. We've got some really good guests going to be on. Larry Batson is going to be on. Dr. Jeff Meldrum is going to be on the 30th. Wes Germer is coming on. Uh, we've, got, we've got some really good guests lined up for that. Uh, we are doing a giveaway we're doing another giveaway ten dollar donation every ten dollar donation is an entry and that's four chances to win we're giving away t-shirts the battery banks giving away another set a hundred dollar value for the battery banks uh two hundred dollar value for the radios that come with earpiece and the big prize this time is a dji phantom 4 drone and uh, about a two thousand dollar value <laughs> And this comes, it's, it's the Bigfoot, it's the Bigfoot Odyssey drone. You know, we have the new one. So we're giving the old one away. Uh, we're, we're raising money to do travel shows. Uh, we don't, you know, just, just asking people for donations is one thing. We do like to give a little something back. So this time we're giving back a drone along with uh, the other three prizes. And, 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 it's, o and it's only wrecked a little bit. <laughs> it's not wrecked at all. It's not wrecked. I'm kidding. <laughs> it's not brand new. Actually, have the, the lower unit is actually brand new on the thing. So it has a, a 4K <clears throat> camera that it comes with. And whoever wins this thing will get a tutorial from me. Uh, they're very easy to fly. Uh, donations to the PayPal. There's a link in the description. Every $10 donation gets you entered in all four drawings. And we're going to do that on Halloween night with Wes Germer. Um, it comes in. A, it's got a big black case. It's got a Bigfoot sticker on the front of it. Uh, it's got four extra, four batteries for about two hours worth of flight time. Like I said, it's the 4K cameras. It's uh, essentially brand new. <laughs> yeah, it's got extra blades too, doesn't it? Yeah, I put the carbon fiber blades on it. So it comes with a bunch of extra blades and lenses that go on for to, for diffusing light in different situations. So it's uh, the full kit. I'll tell you what, I'll get it out here in a little bit and I'll show what, uh, what all it comes with. It's heavy too. Yeah. So it's going to be <clears throat> expensive to ship. But uh, like I said, we're giving all that stuff away on Halloween night with Wes Germer. That's going to be here. Everybody telling spooky stories. So uh, not, a lot, about not a lot of entries right now. But I will say this. Everyone that donated already for, for this last month, and there's like four or five people, uh, you're automatically entered in. 
So, and we definitely appreciate you guys for doing that. Um, okay, let's get into this experience now. You guys, <coughs> you guys were out. What were you doing? Were you researching? What were you doing together? Uh, we there was a there's an area a few miles uh, as the crow flies from my home, and I had went uh, about a year and a half ago, I, I believe. There's a plum tree, a wild plum tree that's growing out there, and it's been out there as far back as I can remember. And I wanted to dig up a sapling off of it, and I drove out there with intentions of getting me a young sapling to bring it home. I, I have all kind of stuff in plants. I, 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 my hobby is growing things, flowers, anything. I love just plants. And I got out there and I was on the back side of that plum tree and a big limb comes flying over. I think it came from behind me and it nailed the camper top on my truck, which knocked a, a good crease in it, a dent. And it broke the drive gear for the side window that lets the wind out. And I thought uh, some kids were out there growing dope. And they were mad because I come up there and I was messing around trying to get a tree. And I was furious calling them out and threatening to call the game warden because I honestly thought it was people. <clears throat> Excuse me. And long story short, uh, I got out of there. It was not people. I heard grunting, uh, a couple of growls, just stuff that people don't do. And so I left. Well, when Jeff came down this past week, he said, um, why don't we run out there and go check that area out? And we did. We uh, went out there and we drove past the plum tree and we came back and I, was, I showed him there's a little uh, lake bed. And when it holds water, it's got a little mud puddle. 30 or 40 feet across and a foot and a half, two feet deep. And that's it. It's normally dry except for that little spot. Well, we decided to come back that evening right before sundown and try to get us about an hour of footage and just walk around. I film everything. Um, most people write in diaries. I have problems writing because of the nerve damage in my hands. And so I use my phone. I've probably got six hours of junk videos but i document everything um, i enjoy doing it and so jeff was uh, security yeah he stayed ahead of me when we got into bad stuff and when we first got there we were, were walking around that what looks like a lake it's a little low pond when the water level gets back down we just had a lot of rains a couple of a month and a half ago and it still hold water uh, real shallow. And as we were walking around and it was just, it was beautiful. Had a, a good feeling, a creepy in one corner when we walked around it, it just had that something was off, but it wasn't a bad feeling. It just, something wasn't normal. Once you got past it, everything was fine. And the, 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 oh, oh yeah. The, there's trees down there, um, live oaks, and they've got these huge limbs that are, they're laid out. If you stand back and look at them, you can see what appears to be a maze or a funnel. Like if you were herding uh, sheep or goats or herding animals, you would push them into that like the natives, uh, Native Americans used to do with the wild horses and the buffalo, they would herd them and they had these logs they would set up and it would force them into this little bottleneck and then they'd, they'd put them in a pen. And that's almost the feeling I got. It, it was so out of place. And a couple of the trees had limbs missing and they had a bunch of new growth where it had come back. And But you get under one tree and it's missing two limbs, but there's 10 limbs under it. And there's certain areas under these limbs like toward the end of them it almost looks like a, a hunting blind all the leaves are cleared uh, it's just a, a patch of dirt and it's thick leaf cover around it but it's cleared in just certain areas and around one tree it was cleared around the base of the tree but these these limbs we had to 
maneuver in a really erratic way just to get on the other side of them. You couldn't really walk over them. It wasn't a mountain of them, but the way they were laid out almost looked uh, strategically placed, like someone intentionally like, laid them that none way. Of them except one table, they were all brought in from somewhere else. These were and huge all, them, but We all four couldn't yeah, pick up some of them. Yeah, some of them were uh, like that, 12 inches maybe. But from what I remember, the stump end of almost all of them were facing the same direction. But it's it like was like a funnel. It, yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't, uh, there's no tracks where somebody had drug it in. Uh, it was almost like it was carried in. But you'd have to be pretty stout to carry the majority of them. They were, uh, they were big. <clears throat> and that was very unusual. But we finally found a, a clearing between them. And it looked like a, a very wide game trail that went from that open area around that water hole. And this was uh, close to where the, the normal water hole would normally be. But now that whole area is kind of filled. And as you're coming up out of it, out of that area by, the, by that water, you go uphill a little bit and it just gets incredibly thick. A couple of hundred yards uh we were headed west, and a couple of hundred yards west from where we were at, at the edge of that brush pile, is the plum tree where I, I had the truck dented. We got up there, and something shot by. It was off on my right, and Jeff thought he had seen something, and I was trying to film the direction where he seen it. And from my right, something darted by really fast, and I heard it, and it, it spooked me. It, it shot by so fast, and I didn't see anything. I thought I seen a black flash, but I think that was my mind because I heard the sound, and I spun pretty quick, and I, I don't know that I actually seen something, but I definitely heard something, and then we heard the palmettas moving, but we went ahead and continued back. We... Uh, found tracks two were real clear real defined one of them it was only um, like the the ball of the foot up by the toes and then the toes but the all these tracks only had three toes there were no claws in them uh, toes. they were in the sand big fat toes and like they had three big toes they, they, they were shaped like a book a bigfoot track except for the three Stubby toes. Yeah, it look, looked like a human's footprint, and it wasn't big. Uh, probably a, a eight or nine shoe at best. But it was a bare but foot. It was a bare foot. Uh, one of them could have been a bear if there were bear in that area. Uh, well, I don't mean like I, a bear. I mean bear like no shoes on. A bare foot. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, just like if one of us were to go through there with no shoes or socks on. But the, the two that were clear were in sand, and you could see the complete outline. You could see the three toes. It was very defined. And it wasn't, it didn't look as though there were an injury and that this person lost two toes. They were, the width of the ball of the foot contained the three big toes, and there wasn't room for two more toes. It was yeah. just a very uh, yeah, odd. Natural. No, you know, it didn't what, look natural at all. Well, it, what it kind of sounds like, and or it could possibly be, is if one went running by on all fours. You know that. I mean, was there any other marks like like knuckle prints or hand prints or this anything? Was a, there was a plain, this was a plain, a plain foot track. It, it looked like. The, all the same indiction, pretty much. It looks about like it walked. Uh, day on the ground, but very, very impressive. I mean, the impression was spot on. It, uh, it was clear as it could possibly be. We got a good picture of it on film. Yeah, well, you were. know, the, the description you guys are going to give of this creature that you saw, three-toed track, probably is going to make a whole lot more sense. Uh, and I, we're kind of waiting for you guys to get into that, so I'm just okay. like I said, patiently waiting. Yeah, the... Uh, <laughs> Well, I, I've I've seen the other tracks of what 
people claim is a Bigfoot track. And I didn't see what made the track. And I, I've seen them. And they look like human tracks, and but they're pretty daggum big. They're, they're large. But this wasn't like it looked like it except for the toes and i've never seen nothing like that but as we were investigating that spot jeff said um there was something over there and he was pointing and you know he ta how tall he is he's looking over the brush that's right there in front of us i couldn't see over it and so i held the camera up up enough where i could see and i was watching the screen on it and i could see something but I couldn't really make it out. And I thought it had moved. And then Jeff said it just moved. And that's when I knew whatever it was, was, was moving, but I couldn't see it because I'm holding the camera up, trying to see over the bush. And Jeff's just kind of peering over at it. How far? And uh, probably yeah. 30 feet. Um, Close. When you say about 30 feet or so from us, about yeah, it was close. Years. And so what I've done, Jeff continued uh, west, just uh, creeping, not walking, just barely moving. And I went north just five or six feet to try and get around that bush and I could see. There was a dark spot and I was watching it. But it just on the camera wasn't looking right it looked like pareidolia and i've seen I've, I've seen a lot of pareidolia and i just wasn't seeing it and I, I i'd said something to him i don't remember what i said but to the right of where i was holding the camera i seen a head turn and i realized i didn't have the camera on him but when it turned i seen pointed ears like a bat um and i thought he had a uh, white eyes, but I had some screenshots sent to me and a lot of people that have also found it in the video said that it was either white eyebrows or some type of line. And it was not the eye itself. It was something uh, just right there at the eye. But when it had turned, Jeff said it's right in front of me. And then it turned back toward him. And uh, I, I was scared. It scared me. But it's what, just, it's just, a, it looked just like I was looking at a, a squat head. It looked like about a little more than half a coconut. I could see that, that, uh, that conical shape, but it was yeah, about it a, a, yeah, a, foot a dome, to, to like a, a pine tree and about two or three feet off the ground. And I can see it plain as day. And I, I saw it, I thought I saw it move once. Then I, I'm pretty positive I saw it move again. That's when I told Donnie, Donnie, there's something dark over here beside this pine. And uh, uh, I said, I think it's moving. Well, that's when Donnie held his camera up and, and uh, started to film. But he never moved while he was filming. He just had his, uh, he didn't set the word. He just raised, his, raised the camera up and was filming it like from, you know, up, um, above his head. And, uh, and I, that's when I saw it move the third time. Well, I, I knew then it was something, something alive. Uh, I didn't know what it was, but I knew it was something. Uh, uh, because I kept seeing it move. Uh, and, uh, uh, and that's when Donnie, as I'm watching, I never, I never took my eyes off of it from the time I spotted it to the time Donnie backed away, then I backed away with, with him a afterwards. Uh, because I, I wasn't sure it wasn't a threat, uh, especially when he said he had pointed ears. Uh, I didn't know exactly what it could have been. But as Donnie, as Donnie backed away, uh, as Donnie backed away, I, I just kind of motioned him, you know, he, he started feeling eels like, but let's, let's go back towards the lake. And I just kind of motioned for him to go on back, and I and I kept my eye on it. Thank you. I had my safety off at that point, and I had my feet shoot position because I, I didn't know what I didn't know what it was. And uh, and as Donnie's backing away from him, that thing I guess heard Donnie moving and raised his head just enough, just for a split second. I saw I saw it completely from below its below its jaw to the top of his head. I saw the whole thing, and it went right back down like a up periscope down periscope. But what I saw, what I saw was the head of a big wolf. And I'm not I mean, yep. a child, I mean a wolf. Yeah, it looked but like a wolf and uh, no solid what black. I saw. I, I saw it plain as day. And it, and, and, and uh, it, it didn't scare me, but uh, I surprised me it didn't scare me because uh, 
everything I've ever heard about this thing kind of freaked me out a little bit. But, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I well, took it real seriously. It ended and, up. Uh, it I, I didn't dropped. feel, but I did not feel any any sense of this thing's evil. I didn't feel any sense. The thing showed no aggression towards us whatsoever. I simply returned that same that same behavior. I, I had my safety off. I could I could have shot it. Uh, I, I feel very certain I could have shot and killed it. Well, I had no just to do that whatsoever. I know this. I, I simply uh, backed away and backed down beside Donnie till we got to a more defendable position. But I never took my eyes off that area. Uh, all the way out. Well, I want to say this right quick, and I, and, and I know this. You know, Jeff, you and I talked about this uh, over Messenger, and I, I got the feeling that you saw something that you really didn't want to see. And in, and I know you held reservations about talking about it. You said, Carrie, I know what I saw, and I, we are, I know we're going to get lambasted for it. Let me tell everybody this right now. There is not two more credible people in this world than the two gentlemen that are sitting right here, Donnie and Jeff. Um, I, maybe Sawdust Beast, Mark Newbill, would be the only other that I would put on the, the level that you guys, and it bothers me <laughs> that you've seen this, that you've oh, actually Donnie. seen what people have been describing as a dog man. It bothers well, yeah. There, there's because, no doubt in my mind. Because now I can't, now I, it's I can't hard for me. Anything else it could have possibly been. Well, it's not, it's not that you've seen it. It's because you've seen it is what bothers yeah. me. And I, because I know because you've seen it, that that's what it is. And I can't just say, well, someone's mistaken this and they've seen something else or it just because isn't there. I can't, I can't do that. And all three floors have got no dire wolves. And that's, that's almost exactly what it looked like. Well, it had to be tall, right, for you guys to... to yeah, to, it was laid that down. Was, uh, it was laid down the entire time. I think it just... No, it, it, really it just laid down when... Donnie was walking away. hurt me walking. I don't think it knew I was up higher than Donnie was. Cause they hadn't, one of them had raised, your, they hadn't raised his head up any at all. And it finally raised his head up just to look. I heard Donnie walking off. And I don't think it knew I was standing there about a foot higher than Donnie was with, with a rifle aimed at it. And... uh. And when it saw me, it just went right back down. But I, I just, honest to God, had the feeling it didn't scare me. I, I, I'm very surprised by that that it didn't scare me. But uh, it wasn't a, it wasn't a place to be panicking. My friend, though, I can tell you. Uh, how, long did, how long I did keep, uh, I had to keep my head? Uh, uh, I didn't know what was fixing the face. Uh, I, you know, I honestly didn't know that. And, uh, but I think this thing, you know, we we say they can read intent. I think this thing knew. This thing knew I could have shot it, and it had offered no aggression towards me, and I just simply returned that favor. Uh, cool. I, it probably would have been a big mistake if I had shot it. Uh, I didn't have any. I didn't have any justification for that. It wasn't threatening us. It didn't make any threatening gestures towards us, and I simply returned that same behavior back to it. And uh, <laughs> and we made it back to the truck. Thank God. Uh, I said a <laughs> prayer. I said a protective prayer over us uh, to God at that very moment. Uh, because uh, I was I was more than discerned. Uh, how, was, how long did you see him for, guys? I mean, how long do you uh, think it lasted? Probably a minute or two. It was oh, a while. I, I, I probably I probably watched it for a good four minutes myself. Uh, uh, wow. I didn't get that much film of it because it ducked down and, and he lost it in the camera. Uh, you know the uh, Gary. One of the things with this the only time jeff and i discussed it he had to leave the next morning and we got home fairly late and we didn't have time to discuss it I, i'm usually in bed by around eight o'clock uh, i go to bed early because i get up early but one of the things that happened when jeff had first spotted it and i was holding the camera up to try to because i couldn't see over the bush jeff's uh, substantially taller than i am when I come around the side of it to where I'm looking straight at it, when I realized I, was, I wasn't filming it, it was to the right. When I, I'd said something and, and it turned and looked at me, that's when I seen it with my eyes. It was sitting up like it was on knees. Uh, and I don't know if it had arms. It looked like arms. The head I seen very clearly, very defined. And it looked like he had one arm would would have been down maybe on his knee, and the other one was just sticking there. It was bent at the elbow and sticking out, and he was behind some stuff. But you could make out the entire animal or whatever it was. But it dropped down. It went lower like it 
went to its rear end. And then when Jeff started uh, coming through the bushes, getting closer toward it, and uh, we were both armed, but Jeff had a long arm with him and his trusty 10. And I had, all I had was my handgun, but Jeff had that long gun on him. And when he started easing up, that thing laid down on his stomach, I guess. He, you could see about six oh, inches of him, but oh, you could see yeah. the whole thing. And you could make out the head. And uh, that's when I got nervous. And we haven't talked about this is uh, we talked about it. I did a show where Jeff and I discussed it and we 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 get all over the place. I'm, I'm ADD, ADHD and all the other things. And I just I jump around and we haven't gone into detail on it. But that was one of the things that I, that had scared me was the when he looked at me and then it started laying down. But he was focused on Jeff. I mean, that thing we, we were the same distance from it. I was east of him and Jeff was just south of him and the same distance between me and this thing and Jeff in it. But he was just hardcore locked on Jeff. But you're going to think I'm nuts by saying this, but there were two things there. Uh, this black uh, werewolf looking thing and yeah. just past him and a little behind him, probably two feet from him. When he was sitting up, there was another head. And when he had turned and looked at me, when I'd spoke to Jeff, the other head turned too. Hmm. And you're going to think I lost my mind. No, I'm but not. I'll lay, I'll lay my hand on any good book or anything you have to swear what I saw. But this thing looked like what you see on the internet, what people call the aliens, the, um, the little ones with the big head and the the big, huge eyes, Grays. but it looked, uh, the gray, the gray alien, but it looked like maybe a Oriental form. I don't, the eyes were like angled down like this. They weren't sideways. They were kind of angled, but huge, but the skin, like it had a, a very cheaply designed camo over him. You can see the eyes. And you could see two nostrils. There wasn't a nose, but you could see the holes where the nostrils were. Mm. And I think I saw a mouth. I can't I believe that. Positive. That just sounds but, creepy as, as hell. Pardon yeah, me. it bothers. That, this that, really bothers. That was yeah, scary. I got no problem with Bigfoot. I don't want to know about Dog Man and his and his little brother out there. Uh, that just is. Let me let me just interject something here. I, <laughs> I want everybody listening to this show to understand something. I went four solid days without sleeping. One one minute. Oh, I bet. Uh, I have chronic sleep apnea. I normally sleep all the time. I have to make myself get up. Uh, everything that happened happened that day. I saw exactly what Donnie saw. Donnie asked me if I saw something that he said, yep, I could squat. I saw the first time I saw this thing, I saw what looked like almost like a, I saw the brown spot, which I thought was a head. And I thought it was a Sasquatch head to begin with. Uh, I was wrong about that. But I saw something that looked almost like a soccer ball, the top of a, a soccer ball kind of, yeah. but a, 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 an off-white looking color. And I, and oh, I saw, crazy. I don't know what it was, but I just saw some movement underneath the brush of something that looked like a soccer ball. And I just discounted that thinking, because I'm, I'm paying attention to his head. The head is what I'm paying attention to. I thought maybe that was just something body just moving around in there, you know, whatever it was. So you're not that. saying, you're not saying this, this was an I discounted alien. That Donnie told me what he said. And, uh, and when Donnie told me he saw something, that, yep, I swear I saw something. I swear like a, some kind of alien or something. And, well, you're not and, saying, you're not saying this is an alien. You're just saying no, this I'm is just something saying that looked, looked like, like that. That's the only thing right. I know it, the color yeah. of. It, 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 it looked like. Look uh, it had that look about it, and and I, uh, I have seen some pictures from Florida of some creatures out there. That I mean, they're Sasquatch, but if you look at the face, it's very alien looking. It it actually has this gray like alien, this gray alien look to it. Well, this, 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 this like picture I'm talking about has hair. Oh, it's just the face yeah. is gray. And uh, Donna, you have this video on your channel, correct? Yes, sir. 
yes. so people can actually go check out exactly what you filmed and then you know decide yeah, for this well, obviously it's not going to be the same as what you guys witnessed uh yeah we didn't get everything uh, he uploaded, he uploaded it took about 11 about to 11 30 to upload that uh that that that, that won't get up uh, he uploaded it all. i stayed up to the upload command and I wanted to see exactly when when I spotted that thing. I wanted to see what if I could see what Donnie saw, and he didn't film it for about maybe what twenty seconds. Donnie, it wasn't that much that much time he filmed yeah, it. Yeah, one long screenshot every every as quick as I could for that entire length of time he was filming it. And yeah, I'd like, I like to get the clip. I've never been like sure to get in my entire life. I would love to get the I clip. Saw. I'd love I to can. get the clip and put it in the editor here. And I just want to say real quick. We are going to take questions for these guys from the chat here in just a little bit. Uh, just be patient with us, and we'll let you know when we'll take questions from the chat forum. Oh, and uh, for those of you that are entered in the uh, the contest, Peter Burt's all I got you down for two, but I do suggest that you use the PayPal. If you donate here, YouTube they takes take thirty five. They take thirty five percent of it, and you know we we appreciate YouTube giving us a platform here and doing this. But we we just we are winning. I'm telling you, not a lot of people are entered. I think there's 12 people entered in right now. So, it just but, saying, we are we are giving away a two thousand dollar drone among other things. What I saw in those screenshots uh, bothered me more than you could even even understand. Oh, I, I can't imagine how y'all decided me he saw to say hmm. in that viewfinder. I saw in every single screenshot of the whole entire time he filmed that that thing I saw. Uh, it was. It, I saw its head move from position to position, from frame to frame on the screenshots. So whatever it was, it was a real object in, in the grass hiding with that with that wolf looking thing. Think they were and, together? Uh, I have no explanation for this yeah. whatsoever. It is bothering me more um, than you can even believe. Because I'm the kind of guy who wants to understand something. If it happens, and I'll just keep on and on and on until I figure it out. Folks, I yeah, got they, I got no answer for this. I have no answer to this, but what we saw was in that grass with that that wolf looking thing. It was it, it was it, there with it. And I yeah, have was, no explanation for it. They were two feet apart, maybe two feet. I mean they yeah, were literally um it was it was hiding from us along with it. Yeah, if you could see uh the way I'm looking in your screen, it was like this thing was sitting right here, just about a foot back. It was just over um uh, looking at him it was over his left shoulder hmm. and just behind him and it just um it wasn't a, a sasquatch creature no. there was no hair on it it was just a, a slick like skin there wasn't anything dangling no nothing loose i could only see part of the shoulders just the just a little fraction of the shoulders and a really skinny neck and this big round head. Big and eyes, the eyes that yeah, and there wasn't a pupil in the eye. It was just was big tires down. It's his head yeah. sideways down. Yeah, it was and it was creepy. Shot, it's, it even takes it you can even see its hand where it reaches up and, and pulls a limb out around its face. You can see like these two short looking fingers, what what I would call fingers on a on a hand, uh, it's even holding that limb back away from its face, so it can see. Uh, man, it's, it's the freakiest thing I ever saw in my life. Yeah, I did. And I had no explanation for it. It's just, it's just, it was just there, and I honestly feel like we saw something that we weren't supposed to see. I don't know why we saw it, but we 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 both saw it, and it was there. Yeah. Uh, he, Donnie got it on film. Uh, well, when it when they turned their head, I was looking at uh, the wrong spot because I'd come around the bush and I thought I had them. And whenever I said something to Jeff about it, that's when they turned and looked at me and I realized they were to the right a little bit. But even when we had him on on the screen and uh, as I was filming them in the screen, it looked like a, a blob. But I could see the hair was so defined on it. You could see the gloss that, that where his eyes are wet. It was the strangest thing. It was just crystal clear looking at him because he wasn't, I'm guessing, about 30 feet from us. He was really close. But on the screen, 
it looked like a like smoke, like a black pile of smoke. You can make out and one part of it, you can make out where the eyes were, two little white things. But it, was, it looked like um, now that I look back on, I thought it was eyes. But through some emails I got, uh, I do think it was eyebrows that were white. But it, I've never seen nothing like that. I've seen some odd stuff. I don't I don't know. I don't know what I to say about it. And, I saw the screenshots that Jeff sent to me and it it was too hard for me to see on my phone. I, I, I need to go and actually look at the clip. And uh, if you if you want to, if you would send me that clip, I'll put it in the editor and, and try to draw out everything I can from it. I didn't know how to do it. I don't know if I can. I don't have a computer. I do everything through my phone and through Verizon data. That's why I'm outside of my roof. I don't got a good he, signal. He, he uh, can text but it I, to you. Gary. Yeah, well, I don't. I, okay, that's fine. Or email it to me. I don't. I don't take things from other people's YouTube channel. I'll. I'll share things on here, from there. But I don't take clips from other people's YouTube channels because I don't want anybody taking anything from ours. You know how to do so, that when uh, you ask. It to yeah. Me. You know how to do well, YouTube no. doesn't. YouTube doesn't know whether you've asked or not, and you can get copyright strikes and all that for it. And I just don't. I don't. Uh, we don't want to do that. But uh, shout out, thank you, Blake Evans, for that. Uh, again. You guys donate here. I got. I have to write it down because there's no list of stuff here, but we definitely appreciate that, Blake and uh, and Peter. That definitely got you guys written down for the for the giveaway. But, but Donnie, I would I would text it to Kerry in, in that format, and then he can move it around to get it to the right. Yeah, I'll turn it into an editing. Editing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. So I would like to see it on. Um, I'd like to see it on a computer, something with a good screen. My, I can't see up close. Um, I've got reading glasses, but I just, I don't have them with me and I'm not going down to the ground to get them. Uh, but there was that whole, that whole walk, everything changed. Everything. The sun started going back behind the trees. And before we even seen that, before I heard that thing dart across the, um, through the palmettas up in front of me. I mean, it was so fast. It wasn't a deer. It sounded, uh, it sounded like a bullet going through the palmettas. I mean, it was just incredibly, just a real fast uh, blitz. And I, I can't swear that I've seen anything, but in my mind, I'm thinking that I've seen a black, just a black flash off to the one side, but we did see the palmettas were moving and we seen that. Uh, then we heard something walking around, <laughs> Well, but we had, hmm. uh, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, I know you said, you said you were afraid, Donnie. I know Jeff said that there was just something about it. He didn't really get this, the, the feeling like it was, uh, that you were in any danger. Was Donnie, everything, was there? Everything you hear about these, about I didn't. these things. They, they say they're evil. You know, they say that they see evil. I never felt it at all. Even when I realized what I was looking at, I didn't, still didn't feel that. Uh, I felt like it just wanted to be left alone. Yeah, Donnie. I didn't have fear of it. Uh, if that's what you're asking, is that well, what I'm? What I'm? What I was getting at is, do you? Was there any point in there where you felt like you were in danger at all? When we were leaving. Really? Yeah, uh, when we were leaving. We that were one danger. section. Uh, when we had got there, the sun was still out. I mean, it was pretty. You could, you could see it at the beginning of the video. When we I first started walking around, the as soon as we, I got up on the water and started going around it, there that area just it had a very uneasy feeling. It wasn't a, a frightening feeling. It just you could tell something wasn't right. There was something in the air. I I, I don't know. We didn't smell anything. Just something was off. And when we were coming out, just weird stuff happened. Uh, when we finally, when that thing moved and that other one had turned, uh, that's when I got scared. And I, I had no fear like they were going to harm me. I didn't have that at all. They just, I'm, I'm scared of that stuff. And I get so clowned scared, about man. it a lot. I get a lot me of... Pretty nasty comments, yeah, but you know, I get it too. Uh, 
I don't care. If you've ever faced one of them things, you would understand. Yep. And I just, I'm fascinated with them, but they truly horrify me. Um, off at a distance, as long as they don't look at me, I'm fine. But when they turn and look toward me, it's game over. My heart starts skipping beats, and this thing scared me. Um, not that bad, but I, I was scared. I was afraid, and I, I, I got told like Jeff that. I was scared. I got something like but, to say to everybody, Carrie. I'm, I'm not a researcher. I never have been. I, you were gracious enough to allow me to go on that trip, y'all, on that expedition, and I, I'm eternally grateful for that, though. I made friends, uh, such wonderful friends over that. It's just unbelievable. But I want to say something to every researcher out there. I I saw this with my own eyes. I know that these things and, and Bigfoot cohabitate together. We saw them in the exact same place. And uh, I don't I don't know what this thing was that's in there with them. Uh, I don't think it was the bit. Uh, but they cohabitate together. They, they, and the first place I saw was from Bama Bigfoot, Miss Joyce. Uh, I saw when she sent a dog man standing right behind some of those squats on her plate. And so uh, uh, I know this is true. So no matter what you think, no matter what you believe, you need to take that in consideration. And, and, and if you don't go armed, <laughs> Lord have mercy, I wish you would. Uh, for your own Good. I wish you would. Uh, yeah. Do you feel like Absolutely. you could have killed that thing? Oh, I know I could have killed it. I had, I had, I had, I had, I had the big brother on about twenty eyes, man. I could, I could have smoked him. Yeah, he wasn't that big. Um, if I were to guess, I would say maybe six foot standing up. But he was, it wasn't um, three times that whole thing. It was huge, uh, man. Yeah, yeah it, it, it was huge. It was it, bigger it, than any dog I've ever seen. But it just wasn't. Uh, bulked up like you see the Sasquatch, how heavy, how dense they look. It wasn't like that. It was just a, uh, how, how, how far were you away from your house, Donnie, when you saw this? You said y'all were walking uh, to that spot. Well, we drove over there. Oh, it's okay. uh, as the crow flies, I would say three and a half miles. That's not okay. Uh, but it's uh, it's around seven if you drive because you actually have to pass it. And then go into the woods and then come back uh, toward my house to get to it. There's no other way to get It's just wooded all through there. And you, you well, tear your vehicle Three and a half miles is really not that far when you think about it. And, we, you know, you know you have all this activity going on around your place. And I don't, yeah. think, I don't think anybody knows except us. They're about to know that, Donnie, you're actually on your roof. You're on the roof yeah. of your house right now. And I saw you looking with the flashlight. <laughs> That's probably what I would be yeah. doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, oh, I just, a few minutes ago, I had a um, a rock hit the roof up here. Oh wow! And then I just just heard something walking in the uh, the trees over here, and it kind of startled me. I wasn't expecting it. I was listening to what Jeff was saying, and then I heard the the steps, four or five steps, but I I can't see anything. Oh wow! Well, <laughs> well you know, it's dark. A, uh, just a hair of comic comic relief here. I, I, well, when, have, when I when I saw you with the flashlight. It, or or look that way, it made me, made me immediately think, you know, since you have your goats and turkeys and other animals there, why do you think one of them have not tried to come and and take a goat or take a turkey or, or something like that and, and you well, know, just for, uh, for food? Well, <laughs> they haven't bothered the goats. Um, or My turkeys are my buddies. I got two of the coolest turkeys on the planet but the these goats are um they're part of our family and if and and i'm not trying to sound uh trying to word this correctly i don't want to offend anybody or make them think that i'm a bad person i'm not if they were to hurt one of my goats um i've got a pretty extensive uh explosives background and i will level the forest on the north side of my home uh, I'll end that. Uh, uh, I can't handle the thought of the animals being hurt. It it does bother me, but uh, that the chickens, they did us in on the chickens. We've got about twenty. They've taken. Uh, I think they've taken them. I don't know. We had some the coyotes had got, and the coyote problem is is fixed. 
Everything went silent for months. Um, no problem with the coyotes. Few rabbits, but they don't they don't do anything but eat the feed the goats drop on the ground. But then something opened our chicken pen, and we got a a deadbolt, a regular the little bolt you have to lift up and then push in and rotate right. down to lock the old school uh, locks we used to have on our home. We got that on the door to the chicken coop, and it's high. So Rosie doesn't open it and let the chickens out at night. And something opened it and went in probably eight or nine times. And we've lost around 85 chickens. Wow. Uh, like, but it, like just gone. Uh, just gone. But it, it wasn't all at once. Over it time. Was, uh, usually it was between five and eight at a time. But it was consistent. It was every night. Was and there ever a scene like blood and feathers everywhere? Or were no. They just gone? No, they were just gone. And the pen is wired all the way to the ground and all the way to the ceiling on it. And then I've got a roof and tin on the outside. Um, and it's actually screwed into the, the four by fours, but it goes below the ground in case a fox or something gets in, they can't dig under it. They'd have to right. dig pretty deep to get down under it. And something had come in and opened the deadbolt and took the chickens because they only one time was it closed back. And Kim is, uh, she's a stickler over them chickens. And she come inside and said, we're missing six chickens. And I said, well, they're out there. You just didn't count them. And, she fussed and fussed and I went out there with her and we were missing six chickens. Um, we had originally bought two lots. We got 30 something in one lot and 120 in another lot. And we ended up uh, raising them for eggs. We got the bannies, the bantam chickens. So they're little old, tiny eggs and it takes three eggs to make a normal uh, chicken egg if you were to eat them, but they would um, just, they'd be gone. And then it got to where the, the deadbolt on it, uh, we come out, the, the door would be closed, but the deadbolt was pulled back just enough to open. It wasn't fully pulled back and in the, the locked open position. It was just pulled back enough. The door would open and they didn't, they stopped closing the deadbolt back, but it, they continued hitting us until, uh, right now we've got, around 18 i guess 17 or 18 left but they're wow they, they uh, fit them hard yeah but I, i'll tell you what stopped it and uh you uh i know carrie knows mark well live wire yeah uh, yeah good guy mark had, yes um I, I love mark he's awesome and he contacted me and said that he could help me out with uh he explained to me what he done to get him under control at his house and i couldn't afford the lights um they're they're cheap but i'm on a very limited income and i just couldn't spring 50 bucks for a light uh one of the ir lights and so he sent mm -hmm. me uh, some game cameras and he to told me to put them up you know on both sides of the house and i put uh, it was four of them and I put all four on the north side. I'm not getting much on the south side anymore, other than uh, like just a few minutes ago, a rock hit up here by me and then I heard the footsteps. But everything's on the north end. And I spread the cameras out. And the first night I put them out, everything stopped. I mean, it was like flipping a switch. And I left them up uh, probably for four or five weeks. And then I turned them off. I left them out there, but I turned the, the actual camera off and no activity. So I took them down, brought them in, cleaned them up, freshened the batteries. And it was about two or three days before I remembered I got to put the cameras back, but nothing had happened. And right now it's just getting to where we're starting to uh, hear stuff moving around and like the little, the rock or whatever it was just hit the, the roof up it hit right here beside me and the oak tree is back that way and we got some on the front side of the house but not right here where i'm at so it's the little things but if it 
starts getting to where they're hitting the house again and um, that type thing, I'll, I'm, I'll put them right back up. But something with that infrared light, they sure don't like it. And it well, everybody says everybody says they're uh, a great deterrent from you know, Scott Carpenter to uh, uh, Carl down in Louisiana. You know, a lot yeah. of and then oh yeah, you see it all the time where people say if, if they're around your house, put up game cameras and just leave them there, and they won't mess with you. So I uh, oh yeah, I've got well, an old camera, uh, but they I, I don't know if it was them, but somebody stepped over the fence in the back, and it's a four foot uh, field fence with a strand of barbed wire over uh, six inches above the top of it, and something came over and disassembled that camera. It was uh, one of the old sheriff cameras, the big Moultries that held yeah. the uh, I think it's D batteries. Mm -hmm. It weighed about five pounds once you put the batteries in it. And I put that one out there and in two days, something disassembled it. It was in pieces. Wow. And well, I know, so the, I know there's a lot of people in the chat right now that are just aching to ask you guys questions. So I'm going to let everybody know right now, go ahead and get your questions ready. Make sure you put those all in caps for us, please. Uh, makes it a lot easier for me to pick them out. And uh, there's 532 people in the chat right now. So, <laughs> this is going by pretty quick. So if I miss your question, it's not intentional. So if you happen to see a question I've gotten it and I went over yours, just throw it up there again and, uh, and I'll try to get to it. But, oh, that turkey don't know what time of day. Those roosters uh, definitely don't know what time. Yeah, of day. Those roosters <laughs> were, yeah. yeah. Did you, that was the turkeys. Did you hear the rock? The no. rock just hit, hit the roof down here, which they're on the ground, just uh, about even with it. As soon as it hit, they started. They started that gobbling. Well, but that's that's the north end there, and that's the direction it came from. Well, while everybody is getting their questions ready, you mentioned Mark Copeland, and I've sent him two messages. If any, if you're watching, Mark, we're trying to get in touch with you. Brad and I and Linda, we're planning to travel. We're going to start shooting the documentaries again. We're uh, we we plan to do one with Mark Copeland live wire. Uh, if he can get back in touch with me so we can line up a time. If not, we are going to head down to Florida and do one with Mark and Melanie Zasky and Donnie. We would love to come by there and make it a two for one and just film your whole, tell your whole story, film it documentary style. Uh, Jeff, if, if you want to come down and meet with us, I'd love to get you guys both on camera, tell them the, tell them the story and just, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll tell your entire odyssey. Get to get Donnie and Kim and those you. Well, I, I saw something a little while ago, right before the show started, from uh, from Mark stating that he was bringing a book to the emergency room again. That he might be here all night, so I don't know if he, you know, sounds like he's got somebody, family member, possibly in the hospital. Uh -oh. So, Let's oh, I'm glad you mentioned so. that because I do want to mention that uh, old bear from old Bear's Den of Bigfoot. Uh, we did hear that his daughter has brain cancer. Uh, so we just we ask everybody to keep them in, in your thoughts and prayers uh, for sure. That's, the, that's what I heard. I hope it's not true. Uh, but that is that it came to me from a very reliable source. Scott Pace was supposed to be on the show with him and he actually told me this. So I'm thinking he got that directly from old bear. Hmm. You know, we, we consider uh, everyone here. You know, this is a fringe topic. It's a niche topic. There's not a ton of people that that are interested in this subject, you know, relative to uh to a lot of other things and you know we consider everyone here family especially especially anyone that does anything noteworthy it, that includes you donnie and of course you jeff you know thank you and, and anytime anything like that happens we just uh we just we uh, we try to get everybody to come together for them and, and just yeah keep, absolutely. keep them in your thoughts and prayers that's a that's a bad deal brain cancer i mean my goodness so uh yeah i don't want to go on too much about that Let's uh, let's get into some questions here. So I uh, I wanted to share something else with you right quick on that walk that Jeff and I did, uh, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, when we were uh, when we decided to back away from that uh, werewolf looking thing, we got uh, Jeff pulled his his light out. It's got a brand new light, and this thing's insanely bright and. It's brand new. It was fully charged. We left here. He turned it on. It, it didn't work at all. 
I mean, <laughs> lights out, <laughs> literally. Well, as we started making our way back to the truck, we walked uh, near the water's edge. So we were away from the big limbs uh, tr instead of trying to navigate around all that stuff. And I got a feeling, and I told Jeff, it feels like we have eyes on us, like we're being watched. And he had confirmed he was feeling the same thing. Well, I turned around, and there was uh, there was a man standing down at the end of the lake. And oh, when, we, when we come in during the daylight, Jeff had uh, his strap came unlocked. And so I stopped filming while he got his strap fixed. And we were talking about going around that end of that, that uh, it's not a lake, but just that body of water. And I, I said, why don't we uh, go around that end of it? Because I seen something on the other side across from us move. And I wasn't sure what I seen. I just seen something move. And it, it wasn't um, out of the side of my eye. I was almost looking directly at it. Uh, there was a an orange object on the ground. Jeff thinks it may have been an old water heater or something. Oh, and I seen God. something uh, behind it move. And we couldn't tell what it was, but I looking at the end, I said, you know, why don't we go down there and we can go around it. There's like a little island right there, right as you get down near the end. And he said um, something to the um, line of, you know, will we be able to get around there? Is it too boggy? And so I zoomed in. Uh, I wasn't filming. I just held the camera up and I zoomed in to see if we could see. And it was all open. And so we decided we're going to go over here and look at all the limbs and we ended up getting off course and we went up into that thicket and that's when we ran into that dog thing. Well, when we was coming back, when I got that feeling, I turned around cause I was, uh, Jeff was leading the way. It was dark and up under them trees. And there's, when I looked behind me, there was what I thought was a man down there and, uh, probably 180 to 200 yards, but th there was a tree. And I, I had filmed it when we came in. We had talked about going around that end, and it's open. But when I turned around, I said, uh, told Jeff, I said, look, look at that. And he said, you could see it. It was solid. It looked like a man. He was There was a tree there, but he was standing next to it. And this fellow was huge. And I zoomed in, but it was so far. When I zoomed in, it was pixelated, and it looked like, uh, he had holes all in him and the tree looked, it, it wasn't clear at all. And it's, uh, we, we got it on video, but you can't really make out when I zoomed in so far on it. It's just, it's, it looks like pareidolia. Yeah. And, uh, but we seen it a plain as day. It, it wasn't it like, dark yet, it like but it was dark. Figure, a massive figure. When I say massive, yeah, yeah. I'm massive. You know, to yeah, me, it's... when it comes to images, when it comes to any kind of images, there's a difference between having a narrative, a story where you've actually seen something and you just happen to catch part of it on film and it's blurry, and people going back through their videos and finding these blurry, off-shaped yeah. things that, you know, there's a difference there to me that if you've got something there and it happens to be blurry, that you actually saw it in real time with your eyes, and you filmed it, you're saying, this is this is how much of it I caught. To me, there's a difference there. Um, so, we, if you guys are ready for a couple of questions, we got one right here. Uh, okay. David McDonald asked, uh, do you think they live underground around there, uh, Donnie? Uh, uh, no, not in that area. Um, I know that area well, 30 plus years hunting that area. Um, before they had logged it, they logged it pretty heavily a few years back, but there, it's sand. There's a bunch of lakes there. Um, I don't remember the figure. It's a lot, two or three hundred lakes all over that area, small lakes. But it's just there's no caves. There's nowhere for them to go underground. Water table's pretty shallow there too, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I would imagine yeah, the, you dig down pretty not too far, and you're going to hit water. Um, yeah. Okay. A lot of wet spots walking through. 
uh, Van McDowell wants to know, uh, he might have missed it. Uh, you didn't miss it, Van. We didn't say what part of Florida you live in. You can just give us a general location if you don't want to give the exact location. Uh, um, roughly 30 miles northeast of Panama City. Sort of between Panama City and Mariana, Florida. All right. I know that area. Uh, Bjorn All Factory, do you think that the recent Sasquatch and Dogman may be seen together sometimes is that they are both interdimensional beings? There's that question. I haven't got, I haven't got a clue, man. I, I have no answer. As to well, I don't think anybody really knows, but what is your, what's your opinion on that? You know, this is what we want to know. What do you think of it? Uh, I, I my opinion was, um, that they were flesh and blood. Um, I know for a fact that they do die if they're shot, but some experiences these last few months have really altered <laughs> what, what I think on that. And I'm more confused now than what I was. And I've, seen something move behind the bushes uh, roughly 60 to 70 yards from me could make out the entire bean or creature or whatever you want to label it a light brown reddish color and he just walked he walked past me off at a distance I don't think he's he seen me and he stopped and I, I was watching him and so I made a real wide circle is all planted pines and then there's a clearing where they cut the trees and it's just the little saplings that have come up little four or five foot little trees and when i come around to that clearing uh, there was nowhere for him to go uh, absolutely nowhere he couldn't have got away from me but i seen him stop when he walked behind that mess i seen him walk and he just stopped but he didn't move and I kept my eye on it, and I'd done a big circle in case I had to get. And he was gone. Um, there was no way he could have got away from me. And it wasn't, um, I, I did see it out of the side of my eye, but I turned and I watched it. I stared head on at it. And it was there. It's stopped the footsteps, the crunching, and with me keeping my eyes on him, he, I don't know where he went. There, he, he, he wasn't in the trees. <laughs> Any possibility that it could have just drop down to the ground and because they're so good at blending in, no. it could have just still been there and you just not known he was there? Um, I wouldn't think so. Uh, it, it's possible. The vegetation uh, in that open area is probably about up to your knee. It's very possible he could have, but it was 11 o'clock thereabouts in the morning, so it was uh, very yeah. lit up. Right. And I just um, if, if he was there, he was camoed well. And uh, I, I didn't go over to look for tracks or pursue it. I just I turned and went back. I left because I didn't know where it went. And knowing there's something there and not knowing where it's at for me is a nightmare. And yeah, no doubt. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I can imagine. Good. Jeff, um, wh where do you stand on the whole interdimensional aspect of this. I'm gonna tell you, man. Uh, I, I I didn't know I didn't know much of anything about these things, and uh, and I still don't know a whole lot about them. But uh, after what we saw and what we witnessed, I'm uh, uh oh. I think, we lost, I think we lost Jeff. Oh, there he is. I think I was happy to say that, uh, we lost you there for a second, Jeff. Yeah, that was my fault. I hit the wrong button. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 you know, they, I, I don't really know. But but after what we saw and what we witnessed and both saw the same exact thing, I've got to lean the more that they're not interdimensional, but maybe even otherworldly. Well, you know, I can't go in here and, yeah. and, and, and lay down beside a dog man and hide. So what, what's up with this, this big-eyed, big-eyed looking thing? That like they there with it and was hiding with it. Right. There's a relationship there of some type. There has to be a relationship. 
Well, I'm going to tell you, we, we went we, me mad trying to figure out what this could possibly be. I can imagine it does. You know, when we went to Omaha, we went to Omaha, Nebraska and filmed with uh, the Omaha natives. Macy, Nebraska is where it was. Wow. And when, I, when I talked to them and they said all, they all believe this about dog man, that dog man is the guardian of the path, the path being the other side From of the, the afterlife. Well, the other side yes. of the veil, uh, another plane of existence that the wow. dog man is the guardian of this quote unquote path. And uh, anyone that is on the path that shouldn't be on the path, they nix them out and they say, wherever the veil is thin, that is where they see this dog man creature. And, uh, you know, take from that what you will. But uh, these these are a great oral tradition with uh, with the Omaha's and. Um, this is what they all believe, apparently. Um, like I said, they they know, know, whatever you want. we do have this is an interesting question right here, actually. Karen Betts asked, Do you think they eat their meat raw or do they use fire? That is kind of interesting to think about. Um, I would say raw. Uh, you think so. something covered in hair is not really going to want to mess around with fire too much? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's the the first one of them things that I've seen, and it's not a bad question. It's it's a legit question. No, something. No, about. absolutely. I just I don't think they're on the same level, um, intellectually or uh, mentally as the Sasquatch. I I think they're uh, sort of primitive. It's yeah. When we got up close to that one, I just the feelings I got off of it, it wasn't bad, like Jeff was saying. It wasn't negative, but I've never got a feeling like that from anything or anybody. And it was just a, a very strange um, I don't know I don't even know how to how to word it, but uh, I don't think they're up to par mentally to be able to handle fire. It's, well, it's, interesting, my... it's interesting that you say that because it has been suggested that dog man is, has the mentality of a wolf, which, you know, wolves for the most part don't really attack people. I mean, they maybe a pack would attack someone uh, if they were hungry enough, but you yeah, know, it, to me, it kind of kill it, for food kind of makes sense. Uh, the way yeah. some of the, the, actions and interactions you hear from people that these creatures are just not trying to bust in your house or not trying to run you down and chase you down uh that i've heard it's just been they've seen this thing and it just kind of eased off is the majority of the sightings that i've heard. had a bad experience with them yeah. that, 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 that didn't get threatened it simply wasn't my experience right and as many are with dog man, more aggressive experiences with Sasquatch that I've heard than with the dog man. Uh, Regina Jackson asked, uh, what does your wife think of Bigfoot, Donnie? Uh, she doesn't go with me when I go out there. I did show her tracks that we had found. And uh, she's been at the receiving end of the phone about a year ago. I got run out of my hunting area and uh, I told Carrie about this once before as I was trying to get back to my truck, I was on a logging road and the Sasquatch was in the bushes about 50 yards from me. And he would wait until I caught up with him where, you know, I was on the road and he was, when he was straight at my side, he would take off running about 50 or so yards ahead of me and doing this like a uh, kids playing cowboys and Indians that woo, 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 woo. he'd do that really loud. And then he'd stop and just wait until I caught up where I was parallel with him. And then he'd take off again. And that road is, uh, it's almost 800 yards from where you park to where uh, I was hunting at. And I had to deal with that all the way back. But I called Kim and I was uh, I was upset. I was really scared. And I told her, I said, you know, I got one of these things messing with me now. And I, uh, I told her, I said, I'm scared. And if something happens, if I don't make it back, you know where I'm at. And I told her the location. I... Uh -oh. Sorry. <laughs> I don't, did, could y'all hear that? 
No, I didn't hear it, but I it just, it just went dark. <clears throat> I see a few trees in the background back there, but uh Yeah, that was really loud. Um sorry that kind of caught well, me off guard. Well, what? I don't know. Something in the leaves on the other side of the fence through the just brush. Rustling, like rustling in the brush. It, it sounded like somebody um taking four or five steps really fast. Mm. It just it was loud. It, well we won't we're not, gonna, we're not gonna keep you guys out much longer. We're gonna ask a few more questions if you don't mind. Oh yeah, I'm I'm fine. I'm okay. not at, I'm not well, here unarmed, I promise you. Well, I know you're up on the roof. You're you're like way up there, so I, yeah, I got vantage that. point. I got you. You got, <laughs> the, you got the high ground. Andy gone fishing. Now, Andy, we're so glad to see you back. We know you had some uh, some issues, some surgery. It's good to see you back there, buddy. He wants oh, to know: yes. Do you think these creatures are autistic in nature and potentially in tune with possibly the astro plane? I don't know what the astro wow. is, but. Well, um, these are obviously your actually, opinions. What you think? We probably yeah, touched on that a little um, already. Aut autistic? Um, I would say yeah. The Sasquatch, the just from what I personally have experienced with them, I would think that they are. They've just they. I don't know. There's something about them. It's almost like they they get sidetracked really quick. Um, but they're on such high alert all the time. And for you to turn your eyes off one for seconds and look back and he's gone, uh, they know what they're doing. They're incredibly intelligent. But they do, in my opinion, they do act autistic. And the stories that I've heard and other people's encounters, I, I would say, yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. Right. They're, they're just so far above my intelligence that it, it appears that way well I, I think that's we could all make that claim right now for sure i know i could yeah <laughs> uh, uh, yes sir michael espinoza do you guys think they're capable of being violent oh yeah capable of it. absolutely <laughs> absolutely the restraint that they seem to show though is what is surprising to me and is it is it that surprising um really i guess because if they were so violent and attacking, I think it seems like we'd hear more about that. I've only ever heard of two. Well, encounters. you got to consider a top tier predator, man, in the world. Uh, this, uh, I think if you encroached upon their young ones or something or uh, uh, crossed a line they didn't want you to cross, I think absolutely they could be violent. Well, but I don't think unless you need the circumstance. You know, I was just going to go to. Uh, Missing 411, you know, the channel that's devoted to people missing in the woods and national forests. You know, I just, as a matter of fact, I just saw tonight where somebody was found in one of the national parks after being gone for two weeks. Um, I heard that, Donnie. Donnie, get some live action. Yeah, the, the goats just took off running. Um, from that direction, they just ran all the way across, and now the dogs up front are raising cane. Mm. There's something moving over there, but I, I just I'm not seeing anything. It's thick. It's hard to see in that mess. Well, Sorry I about mean, the background noise. Oh, that's okay. It's obvious. I mean, obviously you've I got. Like you might need to take care of that. <clears throat> well, obviously you've got. These I, ain't, I ain't going over there. <laughs> no, I meant. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the back door is down there. I just got to get okay. to the ground, so I'm not far. All right, well let's let's take one. Let's take one more, and then we'll we'll wrap it up. Linwood Workman, what are you guys' opinions on the Men in Black showing up after Dogman encounters? I, you know, I've only uh, I've only heard of one story in that. What do you guys think? Uh, I don't. Or do know. you even I... think there is a Men in Black devoted to keeping things hush hush? Uh, I. I do think that there is a group doing that. Um, I don't know who they are. I had a strange run in with some guys with the game warden in one of the areas that I hunt. And uh, it was that whole thing was bizarre. It was extremely cold. And the game warden had his heavy jacket on and it's that real thick vest that has his law enforcement logos and stuff on it. And these two guys were in black uniforms, but it was um, almost like they, they were wearing nothing under them. It was really, really thin. 
and both of them had uh, were a little like AR-15s hanging on their back with mm. the, the the rifle strap, heavily armed, and I don't know how they even got out there because there's one spot to park and there's no other way to get in there. It it is fenced out by the highway, but you have to cross a ditch and there's a little uh, a steel girder that you walk across to get on the other side. And I was way back in my hunting area and um, it's uh, where I've had several sightings back there and several encounters. And I come up and there was the game warden and it, it spooked me. Um, I was filming and I seen them and I, I turned the phone off and they asked me a lot of questions. Uh, they were concerned with bears. want to know if I was filming bears and seeing bears and, um, uh, there's no bear in that area at all. Um, there's wild pigs in there and deer, but pigs and bear don't get along very well. They don't cohabitate that I'm aware of. Right. Right. Uh, but I, yeah. If there are yeah, I, bears and there's not bears there, you just get on. So you don't have to. Yeah. They, they were, were well, they, they were extremely concerned with me filming and they didn't see me, uh, when I was filming, hmm. I actually took and put the phone in my pouch when I approached where they were at. I seen the game warden. The other two were standing beside him and I put the phone up and I went in there and I, I showed the game warden my hunting license and they were asking me about filming. I wanted to know what I had. And I told them, I said, yeah, I filmed coming in. I, I film everything. It's just some, it's an addiction. Um, I film footage in the yard today. I, I, I do it all the time. And I told him, I said, I got footage from where I, I left the car. I said, I'll show you. I'll pull it out and you can watch it. And they, did, they didn't want to see anything. But they were very concerned about me filming back there. And I went down in a, a swampy area with a lot of water. And I sat down and just waited. And um, it, it made me nervous not knowing who they were. And they had a, uh, both of them had a logo on there jacket with a probably nine or ten different it was all letters like it for initials and it was a bunch of them and right. I, I wish i would have if i'd have known they wouldn't have freaked out i would just kept filming what was that that was you, a rock hit the roof did you hear it yeah i yep. heard that for sure yeah, it was a rock hitting <laughs> well look we'll, we'll wrap this up i want to well, i do want to say that uh, those guys were probably more concerned with maybe you seeing something that you thought was a bear. Uh, I, I, I don't know bears in Florida. I know they are black bears are around some places there, yeah. but it's, it's yeah. so rare and sparse. And I think they actually relocate bears somewhere down around, uh, Okeechobee. but it sounds yeah, like we, a lot of activity going on there, Donnie. Uh, it's, it's not all the time like this. I don't know why. Uh, it may be because of the new moon, I think, was last night. Um, yeah, it's I, a very, it's, very thin fingernail moon tonight. Yeah, it's uh, blackout. Uh, I don't know. That, I, haven't, I haven't had that that much. Uh, oh, that's the goats down there, and they're playing. I didn't see you get any chance. I thought you might have got hit or something. Yeah. Oh, no, no. It's... Uh, I had to, when I look up the nerve damage when I broke my neck when they done all the uh, surgery, yeah. uh, there's a. It's very irritating, but I can press on it right here on the side, and it that weird sensation stops as long as I hold this spot. It's strange. It's just something I got in the habit of doing, and I don't like that feeling. So, but no, well, my, hey. my ticker's still going. <laughs> well, look, we're we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up it's been a great show we appreciate you guys coming on here and talking about your experience for sure and look thank you if uh if, if we take a trip down there you, you okay with us coming and filming and just telling your story we'll make a make an odyssey yeah, absolutely i think that would be absolutely. great we can get I a two for one yeah, a good show, i think uh, i just saw where someone told me i think it was miss martha turner said that mark and his dad have been sick uh, we definitely don't want to, you know, be a, put them out in any way. But uh, we are going to be traveling soon. And um, we are doing the giveaway. If you, want, if, if you want to enter the giveaway and you don't have PayPal, you don't want to use PayPal, email me. 
and we'll we'll get you entered in and we appreciate everybody that donates to bigfoot odyssey we're just giving a little bit back we are going to be giving away t-shirts we're going to be giving away the battery banks we're going to be giving away the radios and we're giving away the big prize is the phantom four pro wrong uh with full accessory packs about a two thousand dollar drone it's an excellent piece of equipment and we're giving away when are we doing it halloween halloween night All right. there we go halloween. yeah that uh that drone is actually one that i had looked at for some time and as soon as i can get caught up and everything i'm gonna take the credit card and uh, <laughs> that that drone out of the box is capable of like five miles yeah, it's got a four mile range, uh, about a 30 minute flight time. And with three extra batteries, you can get about two hours worth of flight out of it at a time before you got to recharge everything. It's been a great drone for us. We've done a lot of filming with it. Uh, we're getting back out again and doing the documentaries. It's time. We haven't done one in a year. And um, so we're, we'd love to come down there and shoot with you guys. Uh, Donnie, Mark Zasky, and Melanie Zasky, Crypto Reality, telling their story, and maybe eventually we can get up to Oklahoma and tell Livewire's full story. But uh, if you haven't seen our documentaries, go to uh, playlists here on the channel. You go to the playlist, and you'll see there's um, eleven of them in there. One's missing. I don't know which one's missing, but we'll have to find out that one in there. But uh, we definitely appreciate we appreciate everybody showing up here tonight, Jeff, uh, Donnie. I'll be in contact. Brad, great show as always. Tell JT, JT to write some music for us. Uh, definitely will, and thanks again to the moderators for doing a great job. Yes, you yes, awesome. Hallelujah. Thank you for having us on, Kerry. Certainly appreciate. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Anytime. All right, we'll see you guys Wednesday, seven o'clock p.m. Central for the Researchers Report. Y'all be good. We'll see you. Bless you, buddy.